Hello there. I hope everyone's doing well, having a great, great Friday, great week so far. A wonderful Friday. Uh, I was about to say morning, but I suppose, well, I know we have people that are here from all over the world, or will, I suppose, which means uh, it could be uh, Friday afternoon, could be Friday night, it could be Saturday morning, depending on where you are. Um, Hope you're well. Hope you're having a fantastic week. I'm just I'm noticing I've got some holes in my hands today. Um, we shot a little video, which we'll be putting up oh, sometime probably in the next week or two. It just depends on how much else there is in front of that. And it was a, uh, a little durian feast we shared here last night. I say we. I currently have five volunteers here with me. And so the six of us... Uh, shared a meal. I had somebody who was in uh, Perez de Ledon, a town south of here where there's more uh, fruit available, more exotic things available. Now, of course, we've planted everything here, and so eventually we'll have everything we need. But in the meantime, durians are things we, we, can't, we can't easily find in this area. And last night we had, um, we had about a dozen of them, little tiny ones, um, and some of them weren't very good. Uh, some of them were really past their prime. But anyway, we had them. Um, so let me say hello to the folks that are here that I see so far. By the way, if you're if you're here with me on Instagram, I apologize. It's uh, I, I'm too far from the screen to really get a good look at it. I can see a few names here, but um, yeah, I don't necessarily know them all. If you, uh, si estás aquí y hablas solamente español, estoy en vivo mañana, la misma hora, en español. Hoy, solamente inglés. Uh, so, Pootie Pie, hello there, good to see you. Uh, Krasimir, it looks like you said something and then changed your mind. If you want to say it again, feel free to. Jose, uh, good to see you. I'm having a great week. Thank you very much. All's well here. I hope all's well with you as well. Uh, Pretty Pie says, is watermelon still okay to eat in Canada beginning of September? Yeah, if you can get good watermelon in Canada, no reason not to eat it. Um, I, you know, I, I mean, I, you might want to look at where it's coming from because it might be shipped a distance and that means you know, it's not going to be as fresh, but it's perfectly fine to eat it if you can get it. And you may not want to eat it when it's cold, but in September, um, if you're not up in... Uh, Northern Canada, it's probably still warm enough that eating watermelon feels good. Watermelon is cooler inside than out. And so when you eat watermelon, it tends to cool you down because it's actually cooler inside. Okay, so I'm going to jump over to Ian's comment, Ian uh, 44444, four, maybe, um, has made a 10 pound donation, contribution, and said, if I can't get quality beta carotene fruits, are organic carrots a good substitute? I know they're veg, but I can't get other good quality fruits like apples, pears, but they're not beta carotene rich. Uh, well, carrots aren't the best source of beta carotene. I mean, they're, they're rich in beta carotene, but as is true with virtually all of the root vegetables, they're a little bit hard for the body to digest. Now, of course, you know, I, I, we have many, um, especially on Instagram, I know there's many people here that may be relatively new to me, and you can cook the carrots and make them easily digestible. Unfortunately, cooking them destroys nutrients and creates toxic compounds. And so I know most of the, my followers here on YouTube already know that I advocate and eat, advocate and eat a 100% raw vegan fruit-based diet. I don't believe there's anything better than that. In fact, I'm quite sure of that. Um, after nearly 30 years, 29 years doing it, and have, you know, worked with thousands of people. But root vegetables aren't so easy for the body to digest. So it's always best, if you can, to find uh, fruits that contain the carotenes. And um, in the absence of that, you can get carotenes from leafy greens. Okay, so leafy greens are another way to get carotenes into your body and uh, might be surprising because they're not orange, but they do contain carotenes, which your body can convert to vitamin A, just as we do with fruit. The fruit's the best source, right? And again, I know recently uh, I've been doing a series of live broadcasts on Instagram in Spanish, 
because we have uh, just completed a fast with uh, someone fairly well-known, very well-known in Chile. And so she's been broadcasting. We've done lives every week. In fact, we're doing a, a webinar tomorrow, two hours on fasting in Spanish. Uh, not tomorrow, excuse me, on Sunday uh, at this time, but in, in Spanish. And I've had a lot of people who are seeing me for the first time saying, well, you have to eat vegetables, especially nutritionists. You, we have to eat your vegetables. Well, you don't actually need to eat your vegetables. Vegetables are okay, but they're because they're much harder to digest than fruits. Studies have shown, science is clear, the real science says that we, we absorb the nutrients from fruit much more easily than we do the nutrients from vegetables. So in, in studies with papaya and kale, for instance, uh, the, they gave people a specified serving of kale, and then they measured, you know, they knew how much vitamin A equivalency units, how much vitamin A the body could get from that. And then they actually measured to see how much vitamin A the body did get from that. And then at another time, they took the same people, gave them a specified serving of papayas, where they, again, they, they calculated how much vitamin A equivalency units there was and how much they got from it. So the kale contained twice as much as the papaya. The average person got twice as much from the papaya as they did from the kale, which means it's four times easier to get our nutrients from fruit than it is from leafy greens like kale, okay? Because kale is hard to digest. So you can get it from leafy greens. You're gonna to wanna to stick with those leafy greens that are relatively easy to digest. Other than that, um, I mean, you know, if, if you really have no other choice, I suppose you could eat some carrots, but uh, I rarely eat them, um, much preferring to stick with fruits that are much easier to digest, papayas, mangoes, uh, cantaloupes, orange fruits in general are going to be much, a much better source of carotene than any vegetable because they're much easier for the body to digest. Okay, I hope that's clear. Um, let me scroll back up here and see if there's anything else. Uh, you need something? Lauren, the phone got paused. I don't know what you're talking about. The phone got paused? Excuse me, one second. What are you talking about? <clears throat> Instagram video is paused. Oh, okay. Well, nothing I can do about that, but thank you. Okay, he was just letting me know that we had, we the Instagram was paused. If you're with me on Instagram, I, the message says uh, pause for poor connection. So we don't seem to have that problem right now on YouTube. If you want to go to YouTube, go to my channel. I'm broadcasting right there at the same time, and that seems to be working better. Okay, so you know I, I'm here on Instagram because I know it's it's the it's the channel of choice for many people. Uh, you've got your phone with you; it's easy. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes the connection's not as good and it is what it is. We're, I'm connected by the way. I mean, we don't have cell phone signal here, so I'm connected to Instagram by plugging into a cable, uh, plugs into a network cable. Okay. Anyway, I hope that, hope that helps you in, uh, I understand the dilemma. It's a little challenging. And you know, one of the things for sure is when you can get, uh, fruits that are high in carotene. So it's not just beta carotene, there's other carotenes as well, although we typically talk about beta carotene. You know, obviously over the summertime, you've got ample melons and peaches and nectarines, etc. cetera. Um, in the other seasons in the winter, long winter in Canada, um, it might be a little harder. So do the best you can um, and, and use those leafy greens as well as another source, okay? All right, let me, let me jump back up here and see what else we have. Um, Eric Ferris just says, I just bought some fresh dairy. Well, Eric, I think it's high time you knew that I've always hated you. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, of course, that's fantastic. I mean, you know, the, we had several people here having fresh dairy for the first time uh, last night, and it was only disappointing. I had ordered 50 kilos of it because there were six of us, and I, th I thought we'd have a couple meals. And when the, my people got there to pick it up, they said there was only six. And they convinced them to, to let them take some of the stuff that they said wasn't okay. Uh, it, in fact, most of it wasn't okay, but we, we got that very cheap and we have seeds. 
but um, unfortunately, we you know we had we thought we were going to have a big feast, and we, we unfortunately had a little bit to share. So you can still do pretty well. I've had some great uh, fresh durians in Vancouver, British Columbia. Um, I, 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 last time I was in Seattle, I never found any fresh durian, but I, uh, I understand now it's more available in the U.S. So that's great. Okay, we have a uh, $50 contribution from those love songs who says, thank you for sharing your wealth of knowledge with all of us. You've studied and experimented with the facts that you've gathered throughout the years, and that's priceless. I wish I could send you a big plate of lovely cantaloupe we have here today. Thank you so much. Um, I wish I could take my camera, my, my phone, or something into the kitchen. Unfortunately, I don't think I have a cable long enough. Um, it's, it's, it's so kind. First of all, I, I so much appreciate your gratitude and contribution. You know, I don't, I don't do this because I expect anything. I do this because it feels like the thing to do. You know, learning how to take care of my body ha would completely change my life. And for those of you who, who may not know, I won't bore you with a long history, but I was at 23 was the sickest person I knew and spent most of three years doing nothing, you know, in bed, barely able to function and getting worse with medical care all the time. I, I figured out finally that medicine was about suppressing symptoms and set out to find the answers myself, found it through fasting and ultimately through making significant changes to my diet, giving up all cooked food and all animal products. And it, it, I was three years sick since getting myself well at 26. I'm now 59, coming up on 60, haven't been sick a day since I was 26. And this is possible. This is available to everyone. And I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm not suggesting or pretending that I'm perfect. I'm certainly not. And I, I could definitely do with more sleep. It's been a crazy busy time. But um, I've managed to function at a really, really high level. I mean, look at, look at the fact that I've got six brothers and sisters. They all wear glasses, at least to, to, to read or drive. My vision is still better than 2020. Um, you know, my, my family, my younger sister had her knee replaced, was waiting to get the other one replaced. My next older sister, uh, unfortunately, can't, you know, her just doesn't have the same freedom of movement because she's got problems with her body. And I'm still able to be as active as I ever was. Um, life is great. Physical health is freedom, right? I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad I have my, my mind. And, and that, too, is clearer than ever. I mean, I... Frankly, I kind of screwed it up back from, from 14 to 25, um, abused drugs and alcohol, wasn't particularly happy as an adolescent, and uh, sought to escape. And I used drugs and alcohol and did a, did a pretty good number on you know, what had been a pretty well-functioning brain. I mean, even at 18, I still did pretty well, uh, was a national merit scholar, uh, with the SAT scores, but it wasn't, it wasn't as it was earlier. In fact, I was in a gifted math program and at 14 took the SATs. Most people take them at 17, I think. I took them at 13 or 14. I can't remember the exact age. I might have been 12 to enter the program and scored, even then scored like in the 95th percentile. Um, so I was, I was gifted with a good brain and I, I did a number on it by, by sub, you know, with substance abuse, um, completely regenerated. I mean, got it back to the point that, you know, it, it functions as well as it ever has. And life is so much better when everything works the way you want it to, you know, and then if you're willing to make excellent choices, you can maintain that forever as I have for more than 30 years. Okay. You know, I don't expect to live forever. But however long I'm on the planet, I mean, so far up until now, I've been able to do whatever I've wanted to do with my body, where, where a lot of people, I mean, the average guy, the average person at 59 is taking five drugs every day. You know, and that's, I mean, the drugs are poison. They are toxic. They are affecting the body in very negative ways and not things we want to do if we can ever avoid it. And I'm avoiding it. You can avoid it too. I know so, I, I'm, I'm, I know I'm preaching to the choir. Some of you here, Eric, who just spoke up about the durian. Um, Eric, uh, we've known each other now for close to 20 years. I know Eric, you know, eats a very high quality diet. 
and can also expect to live a long time and, and be very, very healthy. Can it be better? Maybe, um, you know, perhaps there's usually ways to improve, but um, yeah, it's really about the choices we make and understanding how powerful our bodies are. If you're willing to do what you need to do, right? And it's simple. It's been a long time since I've talked about this here. Let's see, I'm not sure whether, um, oh, okay, pause to do poor connection. So we're reconnecting there. Live video ended. No, oh, that's too bad. Okay, well, I think we're going to forget about Instagram for the time being. Uh, I'll stick with my loyal YouTube followers. Um, just move that out of the way. So, you know, remember, it's not rocket science. If you want to feel and function at an amazingly high level, all you need to do is make sure you're meeting your body's needs. And, and the basic needs are, are simple. Uh, a, get enough sleep. And, yep, I mean, that's, that's a place I've... I've always struggled because I've always taken on so much. Right now we have so many things going on here. You'd have trouble believing if I told you. Um, but getting enough sleep, uh, obviously getting your body clean. This is the piece that I've, I've focused on because I've seen that it's so instrumental. It's amazing when we take people here who've been 15, 20, 25 years eating optimally, and then they fast and they get their body clean, it's, it's, I mean, they, they think, well, if I've been eating a perfect diet, hasn't my body been cleaning up? Yeah, it has. But it's a slow process when you're eating. And so we've had many people who've been you know, around 20 years or more come here to fast for 21 days or more and leave here completely transformed even after more than two decades eating optimally. Okay, because what happens when we fast is light years beyond what happens when we do anything else? And this includes drinking juices. I know there's those people out there who think that juices are the way to go. They're, they're not. They're unnatural. They're overly concentrated. They're largely oxidized. I mean, I'm not saying there's no benefit. I'm saying there's a benefit and a cost. And the best is always going to be what's natural. So we have a juicer. I almost never, I, I can't remember the last time I made juice. I don't think I've made juice here in, in years. I mean, probably 10 years. Now, I'll drink one occasionally when I'm out. If it's hot, you know, that's an option. But it's, it's something that happens you know, maybe a half a dozen times a year, okay? The key is to focus on eating whole foods because there's never anything better than that. We cannot improve on whole foods. That's the best we can do. That's always going to be the case. It's always been the case. Um, I mean, as long as we can get whole foods, that's what to do. And if you're living in a city... And it's hard to get high quality whole foods. I mean, the truth is, it's going to be harder to function at an amazingly high level living in a toxic place. And of course, it's about to get worse, right? I mean, they've been installing 5G while you've been locked down. They've been installing 5G antennas. If you live in North America or Europe and many other places too, but especially North America, you're probably the same in, in uh, the wealthier countries in Asia. Every city is, is being outfitted right now with full 5G because this is the way the world is going. It's good for technology, but it's really, really bad for your health. So anyway, I mean, that's, that's some of the things. And I started to say, in response to the generous comment about wishing she could offer uh, those love songs, I guess it's a she, um, the cantaloupe is that right now we have uh, several large jackfruit, which is another one of my favorite things. We've got, um, we've, I, you know, as always, we have amazing watermelons. They've been spectacular. I had one that we grew here the other day. It was um, just delicious, incredible. Um, we have incredible papayas. We've had uh, wonderful bananas. Um, we have, you know, we have uh, about 16 varieties. Mostly we harvest Cavendish bananas, although they're completely different from what you're used to, and apple bananas. My favorite, the Cuban Reds. They're slow. Uh, we just finished a bunch. Uh, I don't know when the next bunch will be, but um, we also right now have chocolate sapote, white sapote, um, canistel, one of my favorite things, amazing. Uh, I mean, so sweet, you can't eat very much. It's so rich, but really delicious. Um, I mentioned the jackfruit. I mean, we, we have incredible pineapples. We have, um, and of course, you know, the, the, we get organic lettuce, tomatoes, cucumbers, uh, avocados, I mean, salads are, are fantastic. So thank you so much. 
we're doing pretty well. Um, I, you know, I wish I could share what we have here with everybody. And we have one of the, uh, the volunteers just left again. She just got back last night. She, let, she had to go drop off a rental car in San Jose, four hours away. So she's driving to San Jose. We'll spend the night. We'll be back tomorrow. And we're going to have a little jackfruit feast tomorrow night. We'll take the night off because most people are going to, you know, maybe have a tiny bit of a hangover from durian. Uh, that's what happens. And uh, we'll be ready for a jackfruit party tomorrow. Okay. Anyway, thank you so much. I have several more um uh, people here to, with contributions that I'm going to attend to. Uh, when I don't know, Tyriel Swimming uh, says, can you talk about how to repair a gallbladder, please? Yeah, sure. Um, and I'm guessing you're relatively new to me. I don't recognize, and thank you so much for the contribution. I don't recognize your, your screen name. Um, maybe you've been here before but haven't spoken up, but I don't think I've seen you before. Um, how to repair a gallbladder is the same way that we repair anything else, right? Um, you know, you can always go find a surgeon to repair something, but you want to understand that the process of surgery itself is harmful to the body. According to English neuroscientist Oliver Sacks, when we cut, you know, think about open heart surgery. So they, they cut the breastbone in half, peel everything back, clamp it open, work inside the chest cavity for whatever it is, an hour or two, while everything is being exposed to oxygen. Now, oxygen is the most corrosive element on the planet. Our skin protects us from, we need it, but we have a specific system designed to allow us to extract oxygen from the air without it harming us. When we get oxygen directly into our bloodstream, when it, when it, it directly affects, uh, impacts, touches our organs, according to Oliver Sacks, there is damage. There's damage to the body, and there's cumulative damage to the brain. So surgery is all, I mean, of course, there's always the potential risk that something goes wrong. And there's always some percentage of people, even with minor surgeries, who don't come out of it for whatever reason. Anytime you're going under anesthesia, there's a problem, right? So that's always, that's a possibility. You could always go that route, but that's a dangerous way to go and should only be undertaken when absolutely necessary. I would encourage everyone to, uh, forego any unnecessary surgery, right? So uh, ladies, I hope you are perfectly comfortable with your body as it is. Um, I know everyone's different. You know, I have to admit, um, big breasts are kind of like a magnet and yet I don't care. I really don't care. I mean, I've, I've dated women who have smaller breasts than I do, right? I've got a pretty, pretty well-developed uh, chest, upper body, and sometimes the women I date are, are, have almost nothing. I couldn't care less. Um, I hope you can find a way to be comfortable with yourself the way you are, because getting surgery and putting an artificial thing inside your body is definitely not a good idea, not something you want to do if you can avoid that. Okay. Um, so the best way to repair the gallbladder is by simply meeting all of your body's needs as well as you can. And the most effective and efficient way to repair anything at all is fasting. That's the reason why we fast, because when we fast, we are resting as completely as possible, allowing our body to put all of its energy into cleansing and healing. Okay. And so if you know what you're doing, if you do this properly, there's only going to be positive outcome from it. Okay. It's only going to be positive. Um, I know a lot of people say otherwise. Uh, some of you might have seen we were featured, if that's the right word. Um, on a Netflix documentary that was just released a couple of days ago. We just saw it last night. Uh, pretty bad hack job. I mean, you know, it's, they told us the series was going to be called Well. It turns out it's really called Unwell, and they're attempting to, um, you know, show those people they think, you know, those practices they think are nonsense, whatever. Um, they didn't, they, you know, they did their best to not make us look very good. And uh, the fact is that we, you know, they, they had some, dietitian, I think, in New York City, who doesn't look particularly healthy, but who's talking about all the evils of fasting. And I'm pretty sure she's never skipped lunch before, let alone gone a week. You know, if, if someone like that just fasted for 21 days, she would have a completely different opinion. I don't know where she's getting her information from, but she was talking about how, how fasting is harmful to most people, how no one should ever fast, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, it's absurd. Fasting is the way when done properly. And and look, I mean, all the experts 
over time in memoria have always said the same thing. You don't fast more than a few days without having experienced guidance. Okay, people never do as well. There's potential danger. I mean, there, there are serious problems which are far less likely to occur. I mean, anything can occur anytime, but far less likely to run into trouble when you have experienced guidance. Okay, so fasting is going to be the best way because you're liberating as much of your body's energy as possible so your body can cleanse and heal itself. When you do that, amazing things happen virtually every single time. I can't guarantee that something is going to be completely healed because it depends on the situation. But when we give the body a chance, it's amazing what happens. Okay, uh, incredible. I mean, we literally see what are called miracles here all the time. Okay, so that would be the way to do it. I uh, hope that helps you. Timmy J has made a fourteen ninety nine contribution and says, enjoying black diamond watermelon in Nebraska right now. Just saying hi. Thanks for all your advice and wisdom. You are very, very welcome, Timmy. Thanks so much for, for reaching out and for making a contribution to the efforts. I appreciate that. I've never heard of black diamond watermelon. Um, and it's an interesting name. It's kind of intriguing. Um, I don't think I'll be coming to Nebraska anytime soon to try it. I mean, right now, if I came to Nebraska, I wouldn't be able to come back to Costa Rica. And that's the reason I haven't uh, traveled, haven't left here now for quite a while. Um, but, but it sounds like something I'm going to have to try someday. So I'd love to hear more about it. Feel free to email me. I, I, I wonder what it is that makes black diamond watermelon different than other watermelons, something I've never heard of. I'm, glad, I'm always glad to hear about something new. So thank you for sharing that. All right, let's see what else we have here. We have uh, Shannon. Shannon uh, Brintley, who has made a 499 contribution and says, Hey, Lauren, I saw you in the Netflix doc last night. They tried to make your facility look bad being compared to True North. Keep being great. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I mean, it looks like they, they uh, sort of set out to uh, assassinate us. You know, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting thing. I mean, I, I saw maybe five or six days ago, I saw the trailer for this documentary. And if, you know, the first time I saw unwell instead of well, because they said it's going to be well, and it's, it's unwell. And I thought, uh oh, you know, I know what this is going to be. And even still, I, I you know, P.T. Barnum said probably a, more than 100 years ago, there's no such thing as bad publicity. I'm not sure if that's really true or not. But I think, I mean, one, one thing I really appreciate is that Netflix is bringing um, the idea of long-term fasting to a lot more people. And while their spin on it may, may scare a lot of people, frankly, the people who would be scared are likely the people who were looking for any excuse not to do it, any, you know, any reason to believe that it's all nonsense, et cetera. They're going to believe what they hear. And so, you know, I, I figured they, they, they told me, I don't know if this is true or not, but they told me at the time they left here, that probably 30 million people would see this, uh, this program. And I don't know how many people have seen it so far. It's only been out a couple days. Um, but we have had just yesterday, I don't, haven't looked at what's happened so far. I've been on calls up until now this morning with clients, but as of uh, last night, we had probably had some 15 registration forms come in, um, which, is, I mean, in a normal day, before this whole last four months thing, we would probably get three or four a day. And over the last four months, we've maybe seen four or five a week. Uh, it's slowed way down. People can't travel. You know, there's all this confusion and fear, et cetera. And things started to come back in. But this was the most we've seen in one day, probably ever. And I believe it happened because a whole bunch of people the night before saw this documentary. I mean, I had one, we had one person, check this out. Um, I, you know, it just makes me wonder about people sometimes. Sometimes I lose a little faith in humanity. Someone who has never been here went to Google my business and gave us a, a bad rating and said, you know, please uh, be careful and maybe reconsider going to this place. They've killed people. And this is someone who's never been here. This is based on watching a documentary, which was intended to be controversial. I mean, the, the whole point of this was to, to, is to get views. I mean, that they're in the business of getting people to watch. What gets people to watch? Controversy, 
right? And so, you know, they're, they're setting out on purpose to try to make us look bad because they know they're going to get people watching that way. Um, you know, we can't, we can't trust that. I mean, I, I hope those of you that are here with me are intelligent enough to know that you can't believe everything you see on TV. You can't believe everything people say. Okay. You know, they, they um, it was a tragic story, uh, but it wasn't what, well, you know, what the wife of this young man told you wasn't true. That's not what happened. It didn't happen the way she said it. Did. So, you know, it's unfortunate that uh, they're quite happy to twist things, you know, or not tell the whole story. I mean, they, they asked me about it in detail, but they, uh, they didn't, they didn't uh, share all of that. They, um, they shared what they wanted to, to, you know, demonstrate their point of view. And that's, that's just what it is. I, you know, I went into it understanding that was always a possibility. Um, but I always, I always trust that there will be people who understand. So we had this one, one, we had one person, um, uh, give us this bad review, never been here before, never talked to, to us before. And I think I got one negative comment. And then we got a whole bunch of, uh, whole bunch of registration forms. People apparently watching this going, I want to go there. So, you know, I don't think it's really going to hurt us. I, I think it's fine. I'm not too concerned about it. Okay. Um, Euronis uh, Autio says, has made a five euro contribution and said, hi, Lauren, I'm having stomach pains, with, especially with watermelon mangoes and other high fructose fruits. Could you say something about this? Thank you. Yeah. Um, so let's see. First of all, uh, let me, let me start by talking about the fact that um, I believe the reason that many people wind up with melon belly, if you've never heard of melon belly, this is what happens when you eat a melon, watermelon especially, and you get pain in the belly. And we'll call it melon belly. It's a common thing with raw vegans, fruitarians. Um, and I believe the primary reason people get melon belly has nothing to do with fructose. It has to do with the fact that watermelons are so high in water. They're so hydrating. And I mean, and, and I mean, again, you might think, well, if they're 90 or 92% water, how much, how different is that from, fruit that's that's 85 percent water it's not that big a difference is it well keep in mind that that stool that is uh, poop is on average 75 percent water so if you're eating something like a banana which is about 74 percent water it's not contributing much water to your body because most of the water is going to stay in the in the waste to be eliminated to move that stuff out of your body. If you're eating something like um, grapes, which are going to be around 82% water, there's about seven points of that 82 that's available to your body. 75 leaving the body with the waste, about seven's available. If you eat watermelon, you know if it's eight, if it's 85% water, you've got about 10 points available. And if it's watermelon you've got 15, so it's 50% more water available to your body, right? And there's only a few things, I mean, watermelon, cucumbers, but how many people, like, I don't know about you, I'll eat four or five pounds of watermelon, two kilos or more of watermelon at one time. How many people sit down and eat that quantity of cucumbers at one time, right? Um, I, don't, I don't think that's happening for most people. And so... Uh, what's happening for most people when they eat watermelon is they're rehydrating old stuff sitting in their intestines and they, they get melon belly because they feel full because this old material like a giant sponge is absorbing all this water and now they feel uncomfortable and bloated. And if they wait a little while, then they're okay and they can eat some more watermelon. Now, I never experienced melon belly. I eat a whole watermelon, no problem. What's the difference? Why am I different than a typical raw vegan? I've gotten my system clean. I'm not walking around with 10 to 20 pounds of old hard material as many people are. Okay. So I believe that's the primary reason why people have a problem with their belly when they eat uh, something like watermelon. Um, there are people who though, who are also fructose intolerant and someone who's fructose. So fruits, have 
there are actually many sugars, but the primary ones are fructose, in fruits are fructose and glucose. There's lots of smaller sugars that people have never heard of, but it's primarily fructose and glucose. And glucose, the body can use, it's no problem. Um, most people don't have any trouble with that. You know, forgetting all about the issue with high blood sugar, because the fact is that fruits, because they contain high water and high fiber, they slow down the absorption of sugar in the bloodstream. So people think that eating fruits is problematic for someone with, uh, with a blood sugar issue. That is almost never the case. We take type one diabetics and put them on a fruit-based diet and their need for insulin drops dramatically. You put someone on a high uh, glycemic index fruit like watermelon at 72, and their blood sugar drops dramatically. Most people, they need less insulin if they're taking insulin. If they're not taking insulin, let's say they're type two diabetic, they're probably gonna wind up with no problem whatsoever eating something that's considered high glycemic index because glycemic index is useless, it's glycemic load. And with the glycemic load, almost all fresh fruits are gonna be low. Some are gonna be moderate, but the issue is here is different because this isn't about how the sugar affects you. It's just that some people are intolerant to the presence of excessive amounts of fructose. And usually um, there, there are people who are extremely sensitive. And for those people, if there's more fructose than glucose, because again, you know, some fruits are, are evenly, it's, it's distributed, let's say 50, 50. And some, some things are uh, twice as much fructose as glucose. So if you're looking at something that is roughly um, that has more fructose than glucose for people that are severely uh, sensitive, that will become an issue for other people. It has to be more like two to one before it becomes problematic. Um, and so on your list, you mentioned, um, what was it? Mangoes, uh, you said especially watermelon mangoes, another high fructose fruit. So mangoes are a high fructose fruit, but I don't recall watermelon being high fructose. Uh, in fact, let me just check and see, um, is watermelon considered high fructose fruit? I don't remember what the breakdown of sugars is in watermelon. Um, As if, you know, and, and mangoes are not high in water content. So um, you would probably not wind up with melon belly by eating mangoes, right? Mangoes are, are 83, 84% water, depending on the variety. Of course, they vary from, from one variety to the other. Uh, so it depends on which type of mango you're eating. But most mangoes are relatively low in water and therefore aren't going to affect you in terms of rehydration of old material the way that something very high in water is. Again, miss, uh, watermelon would do it. Um, other melons could do it if you eat enough of them. Although I don't know anyone who eats as much of the other melons as they eat of, of uh, watermelon. Although I, there are people who will experience uh, melon belly with any kind of, of, um, of melon. It just depends. Um, so usually for, mo for the average person, fruits that are higher in glucose than fructose are usually going to be easier to digest but, and less problematic for people that have insulin resistance and et cetera, those kinds of issues. Um, so it just depends on, I mean, you can look at them relatively speaking. Uh, I'm still looking for something that gives me some information here on watermelon. Uh, unfortunately, not here. Um, so mangoes, high fructose for sure, uh, higher than, than most fruits. And that's going to be a problem for some people. It could be that you've got two different things going on. It just depends on what else it is you're sensitive to. You know, if you, if, I mean, this is something you can easily explore on your own. If you'd like some help, feel free to schedule a consultation with me and we can see if we can figure out, you know, just exactly what's going on. But in, in either case, I mean, with the exception of a very small minority of people who, have serious fructose intolerance. In most cases, we get the body clean and this ceases to be an issue. Um, every once in a while, I mean, there, there are these people who are just super uh, fructose intolerant and maybe that's not gonna change. With fasting, it usually does. And so if that's the issue, you know, it'll usually change. If the issue is stuff sitting in your belly, which you're rehydrating, that we can definitely change. Uh, we can get that stuff out. Um, 
Yeah, I apologize. You're absolutely right. So watermelon is considered high fructose. So for some people, I mean, it could be that that's all that's going on for you is that you, you've got a sensitivity to high fructose fruits. Um, you know, if you look at the list of fruits that you're sensitive to, if you're sensitive to any fruit that has, that's at least 50% fructose, then that's one thing. If on the other hand, you, you know, you're sensitive to any fruit that's only twice as much fructose as glucose, okay, that's, that's easier because you have far more options available to you. Um, in either case, you can almost certainly dramatically improve that by fasting long enough to give your, put your body back in balance. Okay. So my recommendation would be to, uh, to fast if you when you get a chance to. All right. Um, hope that helps. Midhat. Midhat. I thought you were resting. Um, Midhat is, is actually here with me right now. Um, Midhat says, greetings to all. I finally made it here. He's right here at Tanglewood in our internet lounge. I knew what to expect because I must have watched all 600 videos of Lauren. But guys, you have to experience it for yourself. The place is gorgeous, heaven-like, just paradise. Thank you so much for your kind comments and as well as the generous contribution. I appreciate that very much. We're really glad that you're here. We have a lot of people. I have a call. Um, I have various calls with clients, you know, group Skype coaching calls. And I have one call where there are four people on the call all of whom wanted to be here now and couldn't get here from where they are. And so instead, uh, they're all working with me via Skype. Um, you know, I, it's been frustrating for a lot of people and frustrating for us too. But I mean, I understand, you know, for some of you, it must be very frustrating because you've been trying to get here and Midhat is um, finally able to make it here. I'm glad that's happened. We're glad that you're here and having a great experience so far. Um, it, you know, it might get more difficult at some point, as I think you're aware, but it's all going to be well worth it because what happens at the end, if you do what you need to do, what happens is almost always extraordinary. Um, Neil Brown has made a $10 contribution and I want to respond to that. I wanted to say something about dry fasting while I'm thinking about it, but I'm going to, I'll come back to that in just a second. So Neil Brown has asked, what do you think about negative ion pendants to combat EMF? Wear all day while sleeping or just when awake. Thanks in advance and have a great day. Um, so I don't really know how effective these pendants are. I've heard from people who swear by them, who say that they're you know, the greatest thing ever, that they make an enormous difference. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I think there's, there's certainly benefit to it. Um, I'm, you know, I'm by design, I made a choice. I live in a place where there's relatively little, of course, there's EMF here from my computer screen, which I'm a fair distance away from, as you can probably tell. Um, you know, I, I try to keep my distance and, and don't have so much going on here. We don't have a lot of electronics. We don't have a lot of appliances. Uh, there's no cell phone signal. There's no Wi-Fi here or very poor cell phone signal. Um, and so, I, I guess I don't really feel the need to do that. Now, the other thing that's, that's important to do, you know, is to keep yourself grounded, right? So um, barefoot on, on tile or concrete floors that are actually connected to the ground, or even better, you know, go out on the grass, get some, get some grass, uh, lay on your back for an hour. Um, that's powerful, okay? It's amazing what that does for you. But if you're working in an office, if you live in a city, you know, if you're if you're exposed to, to these kinds of radiation, yeah, I mean, I, honestly, I don't know how well they work from personal experience. Uh, in fact, I have somebody here who was listening on Instagram, and, uh, which I've lost, so I'm not sure if he's still with me or not. But he gave me something that which which goes on the phone to protect you from cell phone radiation. Swears by it. Honestly, I lost mine. He's aware of it, but um, it's in my car somewhere, but I can't find it. I took, I, I hadn't stuck it on because I was planning on changing phones. I hadn't changed phones yet. Took the, the cover off the phone and the thing slipped between the seats and I, I haven't been able to find it. Maybe we need to take the seats out. Um, I don't see how these things can hurt you. You know, my guess is it's probably fine. Uh, there's also people who swear by shungite. If you're not familiar with shungite, I could probably find a piece of it. I think I have a piece, maybe, uh, let me see. I know I have a piece. I'm, I think I know where it is. Give me one second. I'll be right back. Let me see if I can find a piece of Shanghai to show you.
Okay, so this is a tiny piece of shungite. Um, it's you know it's a, it's a black, shiny black stone. This comes from Russia. Uh, it was gifted to me by a Russian client of mine. Um, and there are shungite pendants you can get. Actually, she and her husband have. Uh, they live in Colorado, and they built a. They took a trailer and outfitted it with a shungite floor and shungite panels. I think on the walls. And you can go in there and, you know, become de-ionized, uh, uh, you know, de-cluttered, de whatever it is, uh, electronically. People experience amazing shifts by being in the presence of this stuff. And, and this has been tested. There's some amazing studies that have looked at the effect of this, including one where they took a group of fertilized eggs from hens, you know, not bought from a store, but from hens on a farm. And they, they stuck these eggs in a box next to a Wi-Fi router, and none of the eggs hatched. Uh, not one of them hatched. Then they took another bunch of eggs from the same hens, from the same farm, in the same place, stick them in the same box next to the same router, but with a piece of shungite right there, and all the eggs hatched. And so something was definitely protecting those eggs from the, the radiation from the, uh, the Wi-Fi. Uh, in that second second case. So, you know, again, it, it probably makes sense to do something. I don't know, you know, in a 5G world, I'm not sure if we'd need to wear suits made of uh, shungite with tons of stones. I'm not sure how we would do that, but I don't really know much. I'm sorry, I can't really help you much with this. Uh, let me know, I can send you $10 back if you like. Um, I hope that's helpful to you. I mean, I don't see any harm in, in using them. I just don't really know from personal experience how well they work. Um, I, I'm not doubting that they do. Uh, I used to doubt that they did, but I've heard from people that I know, and so maybe it's not so bad. I also just happened to cash here. Escher Dreshur um, says, fasting at Tanglewood was the best health experience I've ever had. And thank you so much for that, for that kind and lovely comment. I'm really glad to hear that that was your experience. You know, that is what we're shooting for. Uh, we've attempted, you know, as Midha was talking about how beautiful it is. It, it, it is very beautiful here. Uh, most people are blown away by the by the natural beauty. And I believe that affects all of us. And we've done our best to create a beautiful place. We also have an amazing staff here, you know, a team, not just of the, the paid staff. We have uh, fantastic volunteers. Um, I mean, there's, there's so much, you know, just the energy here is really amazing. And so what happens for people here most of the time is incredible. Now, you know, it's not always easy. Uh, it can be challenging. There are risks involved. Um, and honestly, you know, it's been said before coming back to the comments about the documentary, uh, people have said, well, True North is much safer. And that's absolutely true. It is much safer. Okay. It's much safer in the same way that staying home inside your fortress is safer than going out on the street where a tree could fall on you, you could get hit by a car or catch a stray bullet, you know, or something like that. Um, there's always more risk if you go do something. And at True North, they break your fast as soon as any of your vital signs are outside the normal range, which means your body very often cannot complete the process that it needs to in order for you to feel and function as well as possible, which is why we regularly have a you know, a small group of people who come here every year from who already had been there and didn't get the results they wanted. I doubt many people go the other way, come to us and then wind up going there. I doubt that happens. Um, I'm not saying it never does, but I, I doubt that happens very often. We have a regular parade of people coming from there every year. Okay, let me scroll down and see if there's any other super chats here. And if not, I'll come back up and there are. Uh, so, Jose Gomez has made a $5 contribution and said, we're awake, Lauren, had to avoid all media, but it's what it is, and we need to learn to coexist and listen to our body and intuition. Thanks. You are so welcome, and you are so right. Right. Ultimately, the goal is to, to get back in touch with the incredible wisdom of the human body, of the organism. Right. Most people spend their entire life right here in this real estate between their ears, and I don't care how intelligent you are, you're never going to outthink your body, okay? The messages from a clean, well-functioning body are perfect. I mean, there's a perfect feedback system. So when your body works properly, it tells you exactly what you need. It tells you when to eat 
and when to, it tells you what to eat, okay, and how much, and you know when to stop. It doesn't it doesn't say go eat four pounds, you know, four kilograms of this. It says have some watermelon, and then it says stop. That's enough. If you listen to it, you'll do really really well, okay. If you insist on over, yeah, this is good. I know my I know my body doesn't want anymore. I'm going to keep eating anyway. That doesn't work, no matter how good the food is. It doesn't work. And I've, I've worked with many people who have gotten in serious trouble, who've created serious issues by overeating the highest quality food. Now, I mean, clearly overeating watermelons or, you know, or, or bananas or papayas, mangoes, that's a lot better than overeating McDonald's French fries and hamburgers. Okay. I'm not arguing with that. Of course, of course, the higher the quality food, the better. But uh, some of you may, I'm not going to mention names, but there were some, some people who were uh, pretty well known uh, on YouTube, etc. you know, 10 years ago or less, who were promoting eating as much as you possibly can, right? If, if, if this is good for you, have as many of them as you can. That, that's absurd, completely illogical, unscientific advice, which I guarantee doesn't serve anyone. Okay, and again, I mean, this this should be, it seems to me, it, like it should be self-evident. Isn't this obvious? No matter what, how good it is, the body has to work to process it. How do we improve? How do we do better by making our body do more work than necessary? Okay, it, it's, there's no benefit to that. You know, imagine, like, uh, push-ups are a great exercise. I love push-ups. I've been doing push-ups ever since I was 14, uh, almost every day since I was 14, not every day. But, but uh, there have been many times I've taken long breaks, especially in college, those years I was partying hard. But push-ups are – but let's say that – and this is – I'm not saying this is true, but let's say you would max out on your benefit with 100 push-ups. Would it help you to do 200? No. Not if you're not getting any more benefit. Okay? You're just working the body. You're working the joints. I mean – you know, things are going to wear out eventually if you if you overwork everything, right? I mean, there's no reason, to, there's no benefit to doing that. I hope that's clear. Uh, there's no benefit to overeating. We want to get what we need, but not more than that. And, and again, I, I hope, I hope, I, I know, I know my followers tend to be intelligent people, right? Because the morons can't stand to listen to whole sentences that are grammatically correct and that actually make sense. They're like looking for sound bites, and you know, people uh, come onto my videos and say. This is boring. You're boring. And, you know, and yet uh, the people who are where they should be are telling me, hey, give us more. Like, keep on talking. We, you know, we love hearing this. We love hearing you explain this stuff. And that's because intelligent people interact with things in a different way. So I know you guys, if you're here with me now and you're not here trolling, you're intelligent and you understand the difference. Right. But it's amazing how, how people sometimes refuse to see what seems so, so self-evident. Okay, uh, thank you, Jose, very much. Um, Hedo Alfonso has made a uh, five uh, Canadian dollar contribution and said, Hi, Lauren, does alternative day fasting have more cons than pros, in your opinion? What would you advise against doing that? Would you advise against doing this long term? Thank you. Okay, it's a great question. And while it's probably self evident for anyone not clear about this, alternate day fasting means you eat one day and fast the next eat one day, fast the next. This was one of the first intermittent fasting schemes. It was one of the first things that people tried. Um, let's give the body this break every other day, and you know maybe we'll do better that way. And sure enough, they, there was benefit to be had by doing that. Okay, People definitely saw benefit. Does that mean it's something we should do? Well, I'm not so sure it's a good idea. Um, I'm just trying to think how, how best to approach this. Let, let's look at it this way. First of all, you know, if someone was doing alternate day fasting and they were eating the same amount of food they always ate, right, whatever their normal, let's say we're talking about an American Euro or European male who today eats 3,500 calories per day. It's fairly typical, okay, 3,500 calories per day. Alternate day fasting, 3,500 calories today, zero tomorrow. 3,500 calories on Sunday, zero on Monday. 3,500 on Tuesday, zero on Wednesday, right? You get the picture. What's my average daily caloric intake? 1,750, half of 3,500, okay? 1,750. So 
here's the way I think about this, right? You, you can understand what's going on inside this thing here. Um, if, we're, if we're doing 3,500 calories per day alternate day fasting, we're getting an average of 1,750 per day. Doesn't that mean that our body only needs 1,750 per day? Because that's what we're getting on an average basis without losing weight, we know without gaining weight, being able to do everything we need to do, we're doing it on 1,750 calories per day. But what we're doing is we're making the body work twice as hard every other day to process twice as many calories as we really need that day. And then we're giving the body a full day rest to recover from that. And then we go back into overeating and we get another day to recover from that. That's what would happen if someone ate the same quantity. But that's not what people do. Studies have shown that most people who do alternate day fasting actually eat on average 50% more food on the days they eat. So if someone was eating 3,500 calories uh, every day, they would actually on the days they eat, they would eat 5,250 calories. And then the next day they'd eat nothing. Okay. Now, instead of getting 1,750 per day on average, they're getting an average of 2,625 calories. Okay, so they have um, increased their caloric intake above what it was on a normal day for them. Well, below what it was on a normal day for them, but above what it would be considerably more calories than if they were simply eating one day the normal amount and not eating at all. Okay, so there, there's now the body is, is really needing, you know, if that scheme works for somebody, they're needing a lot more food, 26, 25 each day, but they're also making their body work much harder because it's an extra 2,600 calories per day on the days they're eating and then taking a break. So I don't know that it really makes sense to do that. I mean, my guess is what makes far more sense would be to be temperate, to eat every day, even if you never fasted at all, to eat every day, uh, 2625 in that, in that example, right? Every day, 2625. No, no zero days and no days we're eating twice as much. So you're never making the body work that hard. And therefore, you're never needing that break, you know, at least not needing it every other day. I mean, maybe there are those days where you didn't get enough sleep and aren't really hungry because your body, when it's tired, doesn't really want to process food. I mean, people use food to stimulate themselves, but does the body really need food when it's tired? I know when I'm super tired, I don't want to eat. Now, if I need to stay up and, and accomplish something, you know, I might be tempted to eat something because I know it's going to stimulate me, right? But my body doesn't want food when it's really tired. Your body doesn't want food either, okay? And so... Uh, you know, I, I think we'd be better off simply sticking with a program that makes sense every day. So in this case, uh, you know, if it's 2625, 2600. Now, my guess is those people who were before reading 3500 calories a day were eating more than they needed to and probably didn't need 2625. They probably needed less than that. Might have been perfectly fine at, at the 1750, right? Because, I mean, you know, again, I eat less than 1750 calories almost every day now for nearly 30 years. There are there are exceptions. There are those days where uh, I've eaten too much. You know, maybe it's a durian, not last night's durian feast, but maybe some durian feast where there were better durian. We had more of them. Um, maybe it's a day where I've uh, I'm at a raw vegan restaurant somewhere in the world or you know, having dinner at someone's house and they've prepared food for me. I'm eating some nuts and seeds I don't usually eat. You know, there, there are those days. That's okay. And, and I may very well eat more lightly the next day to recover from that. But that, that's different. I mean, that's not an every other day situation. To me, making the body work twice as hard every other day is so we can we earn this rest so we can have enough fuel to go through. I, I don't think that makes sense. What I would do instead is, I, you know, I believe very strongly intermit, intermittent fasting and have since long before the term intermittent fasting existed. Some of you already know this about me, but I'm coming up in October, it will be 28 years that I've been eating most days. Again, it's not a hard and fast rule, but most days I eat my meals within a four or five hour window. Okay, there are those times where, you know, maybe there's some event where I'm eating late, or maybe there are some days where I'm out 
um, and I wind up eating earlier than I normally would, something like that. But most of the time, my first meal happens around two o'clock in the afternoon, and my last meal happens around six o'clock in the evening. That's a four hour window, call it five hours, you know, to, to finish the food. And I'm fasting 19 hours a day, you know, let's say 18 to 20 hours a day, depending on the day. And in some days it's 23 because I have one meal. Okay. I, but, but I'm eating every day, except when I'm actually fasting, right? I mean, not alternate day, but when I'm fasting because I, I broke my finger and I, you know, I, I, I know that it's going to take three to seven days to heal completely. I mean, and it's amazing how much it heals in three to seven days when I fast. Okay. And I've seen this with multiple breaks now. I mean, and I'm not saying everything's going to heal in three to three days, but it's amazing how quickly things heal when your body's clean and working well and you give it that opportunity. Okay. So for me, it makes more sense. Um, give myself a small feeding window each day, a long break each day where the body can, can do what it needs to do without ever overstressing the body by overeating. Okay. I hope this makes sense. Um, and I, I appreciate that very much contribution. Um, Jaskaran Du says, make a current vid to address the documentary. Well, it's possible. I, I've, I've got to, I'm going to think about that. Um, I mean, I'd, I'd love to hear from you guys. I may have to come back later, read your comments. What do you think? You know, I, I've always, when, when people have attacked me before on like YouTube videos, uh, there have been very few I've responded to. And my reasoning is, I don't know that I want to call more attention to their video. So, I mean, it's often I'm being, I'm usually being attacked by people who have uh, a smaller following than I do, you know, fewer views than I do. If I, if I call them out, I'm just bringing more attention to what they've done. And I don't know that I really want to go there. Um, I, I, you know, I've got to think about this thing with Netflix. Do I want to, yeah, I mean, maybe you know, everyone's going to see it anyway. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't normally watch Netflix, so I don't know uh, how many people do. I know a lot of people do, but I, I, tell me your opinion, everyone, uh, and thank you for the contribution, Jaskaran. But tell me, what do you think? Um, you know, do you, do you think I should make a YouTube video? I haven't really thought about this. We just watched this last night, and we watched it at seven o'clock. I had an eight o'clock call. It was uh, just just under an hour, I think, 46 minutes or something. By the time we got it working, uh, we had to get it set up. Um, you know, I had to jump off and make my call a few minutes later. And then I had two more calls after that with clients. Late at night, I've got clients that are in places that I can't speak to in the morning because of the time differences. And so I really, and I've been busy all morning, so I really had too much time to think about it yet. I'll talk to the others here today, tomorrow, when we do our, our little uh, jackfruit party, maybe you get their opinions. I'm not sure what the best way to approach this is. I'd be interested in your feedback. Um, I've got to jump off this call because I'm late for a 10 o'clock appointment with uh, some clients. Oh, I see I have two more um, super chats here. Let me address them quickly. Uh, Matthew Charbonneau says, I'm writing a book on our species specific diet. Would you have any references, books, studies to recommend on the subject? Thanks. Love your work. Thank you so much. Matthew, for your, your contribution. Um, I apologize because I've seen you've been reaching out to me on other forums. I've been so busy, I have not had time to respond to all my emails. And I mean, unfortunately, I'm responding first to the ones who are directly asking, you know, either they, they're like needing assistance because they're unwell or, um, you know, they're looking to, to come fast with me or whatever it is. I don't have time to respond to all of those right now. I've been so busy. Um, any references books studies to recommend on the subject uh i mean most of the ones i know you probably know as well right i mean for me the you know the bibles are still the books of shelton uh eric was it was an early mentor of mine although i you know i i really pay more attention to what shelton says where those two things conflict for me i look at i look at nature itself specific works I'm not so sure what there is on there. Um, if it would help you, I don't know, you know what, uh, I don't know exactly where, where you are in the process, but if it would help you, if you would like to schedule a time to talk, we could schedule an interview. And um, if that would help you, you know, I'd be glad to share, if you have specific questions, I'd be glad to share my experience and opinion. 
But in terms of finding you actual references, um, I, I'm not so organized that I keep really good track of them. I read studies a lot and I remember them, but I don't really know how to organize very well. I need someone to do that for me and I don't have that right now. So I'm not sure I can be much more help, but feel free to reach out to me again. Having had this conversation, I'll look for a message from you and let me know how I can help you further, okay? Just reach out and uh, via email and we'll go that way, okay? Uh, Zbob has made a $10 Canadian donation says, does hydrated mean healthy? Do hydrated people look more full and rounded and plump? How do healthy looks compared to ideal weight for unhealthy people looks um, fit? How do, how do healthy looks compared to ideal weight fit unhealthy people looks? Uh, I guess it'll take a year to gain 30 pounds. Okay, well, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't remember if you've told me what your situation is, so I don't know how long it'll take you to gain 30, gain 30 pounds. It depends, you know, if you're building muscle. I mean, I'm not so sure that you should be attempting to gain a specific amount of weight. Uh, and as far as your question's concerned, unfortunately, it's not an easy question to answer. You know, truly healthy people, um, to most people, I mean, I get told all the time that I'm too skinny. You know, people, people see me in a shirt and I mean, I'll get comments on my YouTube videos. People see me in a shirt that's not tight fitting and, you know, it's a button down shirt and they can't see anything except my face and my neck. And they say, you look super weak. I'm going, you can tell that from looking at my face. That's amazing how you can see that, how you can see my body through my shirt. And how can you do, I mean, through this shirt, yeah, you can probably tell um, that I'm not, you know, I'm not super weak. I've got some muscle mass for my size, but um, it's, a, it's not an easy question to answer because there are people who might be overweight, but look really good, especially to the average person. Um, hydrated people, you know, you're going to, first of all, if, if you're talking about someone who's fairly young, there are going to be fewer differences. But as we get older, the more dehydrated we get, the more we're going to have joint problems, vision problems, skin problems, you know, wrinkles. Um, what else? Uh, the more we're going to shrink, right? I mean, most people, by the time they reach a certain age, here we ask them, we, we, uh, we go to put them on a scale, this bioimpedance device, we have to know how tall they are. We ask them. People above you know, 55, 60 usually say, well, I used to be because they're not as tall as they were before. Okay, this is what happens. So it's not an easy question. Um, I don't think the answer should be to try to gain a specific amount of weight. My advice to, to everyone is to not to worry about your weight. I don't get on a scale very often. I don't really know exactly what I weigh, but I know that my weight rarely varies more than a couple pounds, no matter what I do. Um, what I do is do my best to meet all my body's needs as well as I can, including the need for movement, right? We're never gonna be as healthy as possible without some activity. So you wanna exercise on a regular basis. Now, if you do enough exercise, you'll build muscle. And if you wanna build muscle, I can help you do that if you wanna schedule something. But I don't think it should be about the weight. You know, make it about being as, as healthy and fit and vibrant as possible and your weight will take care of itself. That's my advice. If I can help you further, let me know. Uh, okay, one more. This is going to be the last one. Ian, all the fours, says, um, with a five-pound contribution, more lighthearted question compared to some of my previous deeper ones. Have you fasted any celebs, famous sports people? Thanks for being here. I fasted some minor celebrities. Um, I fasted some musicians. I fasted some athletes. I fasted um, a nationally ranked tennis player from the UK. I fasted... Uh, some uh, soccer players, per several professional you know, football players for most of the world, soccer for the U.S. Um, I just completed a second fast with a woman who was a TV star in Chile and a model um, and has a huge following, uh, 100, 160,000 or more Instagram followers. I mean, that's not as big as some people. She's not, you know, she's not a huge star, but, but uh, fairly, fairly well known. Um, I suspect, and, and I fasted some other people. I mean, I've, I fasted um, a woman who wrote a hit television show, a book that became a television program. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I fasted people like that. The, the, the wealthiest celebrities are probably never going to come here because we're not exclusive enough. 
you know, they, they want more privacy. They want to be, and, and, you know, they want more luxury, perhaps. We're beautiful, we're comfortable, but we're not high in luxury. And so, uh, not so much. Folks, got to go. I'm late for a call. I know they'll understand, but I, I don't want to keep them waiting. So I hope you have a fantastic week. I'll be back next Friday. Thanks so much for, for being here with me. Thanks to all of you who contributed. I really appreciate it. Feel free to give this a thumbs up if this has been beneficial to you. Please feel free to share this on your own channels if you think more people should watch it. And um, come on back next week. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.